Antoine, it is a pleasure to talk to you today. Um, and, and while we're here to talk about Equalizer 3, um, it's like really having heavy hearts, knowing how important this franchise has been. Um, a lot of action, but a lot of heart. And now that we're at the conclusion here and working with Denzel for all over the years, uh, that trust that you two have built all over the years that just clearly makes it very easy to work together and the work shows for itself. Just reflecting over the, the duration of your friendship, the conclusion now of this franchise, what are the emotions and, and 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 how are you taking it all in, you know, with this accomplishment at this point? You're about to make me cry, man. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I, I'm blessed, man. I, I I take one thing, one film at a time, right? One step at a time. That's what me and Denzel do together uh, with respect and trust of each other. We just do one thing at a time and put our hearts and soul into that and try to represent properly on everything we do. And um, God willing, we'll do it again. But you got to say goodbye to Robert McCall. Yeah. He's off into the Mediterranean, man. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> Dana Abercrombie from the coalition. Thank you so much for speaking with me. What I really wanted to know is coming from, this is the conclusion of a very strong story and a very powerful character. What was it with this script, with this movie overall as a director that you wanted people to know that you wasn't able to, not saying not able to, but didn't um, give out or didn't reveal to the public or the viewers from before what was it new that you wanted to accomplish with this movie yeah well you know it was this, the first one was really about uh um finding purpose you know and, and two was about uh finding peace with your past the wife dying his being betrayed by his friends losing susan and this one is about finding a place that he might be able to find some peace and also a home um you know for himself but the thing that's different is that um, he's going through an internal battle on this one. You know, he has to deal with his own demons. Has he gone too far? You know, he's doing what's right, but is he doing it for himself now or is he doing it for the right reasons? So that's what I wanted to accomplish with this one. Hi, sir. Brandon Carlson, the Media Popcorn Podcast. How you doing? Uh, my question is, what was the toughest day of the, the shooting this film? There was a lot of complexities, not just with the performances, but with the stunts and the locations. Just tell me about the most challenging day you had. Mm, it's a good question. Um, I think the most challenging day was the ending uh, killing of Vincent uh, in Naples. And Naples is a, is a beautiful place but it's tough naples is like new york in the 70s you know so you know it's 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 rough so there was days where you know you're shooting in alleyways and shooting in areas that are um sketchy and uh you know trying to get permits and things like that and stopping traffic in a place like that is is, is tough to do so those long nights we had some long nights and the weather was playing with us so you know to me those are the those are the nights where i was like i'm not sure i want to do this for a living much longer you know, it's tough, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Hi, Kathy Woods, Couple Soul Show in the Philadelphia Tribune. I'd love to talk about a little bit about Mr. McCall. Um, you know, this is, as everyone has stated, third adding, but what one of the things that, that makes him so appealing, makes us want to lean in, is he is a sort of an anti-hero. You know, he he's not somebody that seeks the spotlight, but at the same time, he is battling his inner demons. Talk about something that you've learned about him as you've gone on this journey, you know, that that kind of like you want the audience to to remember him by. Robert McCall. Uh, you know, Robert McCall does it. He's a very um, uh, selfish person. Everything is is done for other people. You know, he doesn't do it for recognition. He's not doing it for money. He's doing it because it's the right thing. Um, I think what's most important to me and Denzel is creating, we've created a character that actually cares about other human beings, you know, and puts them first, uh, uh, even, even if it, at, at his own um, demise uh, without recognition, you know? So the, the, the message is, you know, we all, and that's why he's such a common man. He's a working man's hero. There's no cape. He doesn't have special powers. He has special skills that he learned, right? CIA, 
but he's putting them to good use. And, you know, I think the message is that like, that's, that's our job, but we got to help other people and we can't always expect to get thanked for it or, you know, a reward. We got to do it. Even if it's in the dark, you know, we got to fight the good fight. And that's really the message. Now, Jerry, again, and uh, amazing question, Kyle, there, because I want to uh, uh, definitely um, come back around with that because I'm curious to know when you look at somebody like Robert McCall, uh, Robert McCall, and 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 you're you're you're, you're seeing the, the scenes at you know come to life and directing and whatnot. I'm just wondering how much of yourself do you see in this character? Because I I, I feel there's a little bit of Robert McCall in all of us, you know, maybe not the killer instinct aspect of it, but that that humanity side, that that person who's selfish, that person that even at times, you know, wanted to detach from the triggers around him and, and, and sort for a better life. I think we all sort of, you know, battle this in our day to day. But I'm curious, how much of yourself do you see in this character? I mean, you know, as a director, you somehow a piece of you, in winds up in everything you do, right? If you're really putting your heart and soul into it, you know, I like to think that I'm the better parts of McCall, not the, not the, you know, the hitter that he is, you know, but, um, you know, anytime you see something, most of us as human beings, uh, you see people suffering, you wish you can do something about it. Uh, if you can, you do, you know, so I, I like to think that um, that part of him is a part of myself. I like to think it's a part of the greater good of humanity that we all have that in us, you know? That's my optimistic side of things, you know? Right so, with yeah. you, dear brother. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, oh, yeah, Abercrombie again. I'm very fascinated in the filming of the, the uh, action scenes, especially the fight scenes. You know, that is one of the signature calling cards to this franchise. And so I wanted to know what the process is because it never comes across as over the top. It seems like these are very gritty, but they're based in reality. Can you talk about those choices? Yeah. Oh, you know, my experience with violence uh, is that there's there's no fair fight. That's the first thing. And, you know, there's nobody dancing around and playing pity pat with you. You know, you're trying to get it done quickly and everything around you is a weapon, you know? So McCall, is trying to get it done with the least amount of effort in the most efficient way. And if in, in the way I design it, it's like a dialogue scene. You know, uh, you're a bad guy. I'm gonna stop you from hurting people. And I'm not here to just break your arm. Like it's, it's done, right? So my approach is uh, with Denzel, cause he's such a great actor. He's so powerful that it's like a dialogue scene. He's talking to him. Like the first one, when he takes the corkscrew and turns it up, he's letting them know, like, you can't, you know, this sex trafficking, it's not okay, right? So you're going to suffer a little bit for that. So each time he takes somebody out, uh, it's done for a reason, but he gives them a chance. But if you don't take that chance, then, you know, that's where the violence comes in. Yeah. Randy Collins again. Uh, my question is, what was it like directing... Dakota and Denzel, who were reu reuniting on screen after nearly 20 years. Uh, I love their chemistry in Man on Fire. What was it like for you uh, behind the camera witnessing that? Oh, it was fun, man. Because, you know, I grew up, um, I watched Man on Fire, but we watched Dakota grow up. And it's something you feel connected to them uh, together. And um, I remember the first time watching them on a scene together. And Denzel just turned around and smiling at me. It's like, She's, she's a grown up now. You know what I mean? She's not the little girl with the big blue eyes crying. And that was fun to see, you know, that relationship. And it's genuinely respect and love there. And uh, so I like to see that. And Denzel is very generous with actors that he respects and loves. So it, it was fun. It's like the, it, it takes the pressure off of the day to just enjoy watching them do their craft, you know. Let's talk a little bit about you, Antoine. I think one of the things that I really like about um, your directing style is, although it's action, you still give us nuance, you still give us tension, and um, you know, you make us understand both perspective, all the perspectives, you know, and you don't show violence just to show violence. There is an understanding, and as you said, a cause and effect. Talk about where that comes from, because in the action genre, there is 
many different ways to go. A lot of people like to lean into the explosives and special effects and all of that is really good. But for you, it really is still about the characters. And then you, it seems as though then you build everything else around it. It's not necessarily about just having the action and us being like, okay, great action, but where's the story in this? Right, that's right. Yeah. I, I look at action scenes like dialogue. I really do. And I try to make sure that you still get a performance out of the scene, you know, um, not just uh, gratuitous violence for violence. I mean, there's a message in the violence. The wages of sin is death, you know? So I, I have a very clear vision of it. Um, I don't like violence. And and so when I do it, sometimes it's, it's, it's brutal because violence is ugly and it is brutal. And I think that sometimes it's the disservice to do it where it's sort of glossed over and it's, you know, oh, that was fun. You know, no, it's not the way it works. Right. You know, so it's like I try to show you the details of it the same way I would do a dialogue scene. So that you understand exactly what's happening. It's not the smoke and mirrors. If someone's arm is being broken, you're going to really see that happen. So that's sort of my approach with the violence. Thank you so much. Really enjoyed this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nigeria again and Kathy again with another question. I want to uh, bounce back on again. Um, every project you touch, it does evoke emotion. Um, mm -hmm. There is the action, as you mentioned, but there's also, as you mentioned, the character work. But then it's that emotion that it, that connects us to not only just our main characters, but our supporting characters. For yourself, what what is the the mental process that you work through to to really decompress and, and and possibly detach from some of these works that are that are just so heart heavy and 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 such relatable to our day to days? If I'm understanding the question correct, I, for me, it, you have to make sure that you care about the people you're watching to begin with, right? And so, if you could connect to the people, you could connect to the characters, you could find some of yourself in that then it becomes emotional, right? It's the difference between watching somebody uh, crying or feeling somebody crying. Two different feelings. So my goal is to make you feel it as opposed to just watch it. And you always do, my brother. Thank you again in Equalizer 3. Uh, fantastic. And just the body of work, uh, what you've done for the community is, um, you know, impeccable. Thank you. We want to thank you so much, Antoine, for taking some time out of your busy schedule to talk to us about this fantastic film. Equalizer 3 comes to a theater near you on September 1st. As always, on behalf of the largest group of African-American film and TV critics, we want to thank you for joining us for this round of AFCA Roundtable. Um, wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you thank all you, so sir. much. Thank you very much. You guys, be well, be safe. Thank you, absolutely.